Good morning and welcome to Run It Back. Two shows left, so let's make this one not awful. We start now. Run it up, to run it back. Yeah. Run it up, to run it back. Run it back. Run it up. Good morning and welcome to Run It Back, you guys. This is our penultimate show of the season, so I will do my introduction. Stadium Insider Sham Sharania, Chandler P., Eddie Gonzalez, and Chandler, the internet was in love with you yesterday, and I'm worried for your health. What uh, What is going on? Yeah. I don't know, but I can get used to this, Michelle. This is a very, very flattering day yesterday. It was highlights, it was dunks, it was crossovers. I didn't know what to do with any of it, but here we are. I hope you're I feeling got, well. Oh, I, got, I had to be a media and retire to get love. I'm catching space from old teammates saying I was the best teammate he's ever had. This is the, we're what? we're on to, we're on to something talking about talking about me this much. I don't know what it was, but I'm a little bit worried for you. But you know what? We can get to that later. We got lots of time. We want to uh, we want to show some more love to the Nuggets as we prepare for the parade that you know Jokic is super excited about. But we we want to look ahead. Here you go. Those are co favorites to repeat. Um, Milwaukee's still in there because we're not giving up on them yet. But if you had to name a roadblock, Chandler, what would you think it would be that would keep the Snuggest team from moving forward and doing this thing again? Well, I think health would be the biggest thing, just to be able to keep Murray, Jokic fully healthy, obviously is, is a main priority for them, but, and also free agency. I, I don't think it's anything that they could do. I think other teams are going to now be chasing them. Other teams are gonna be now planning and prioritizing how do we get you know, deep enough to contend with them? How do we get enough bodies and big guys with enough fouls to be able to manage a guy like Jokic in a playoff series? Um, you know, and so in the team right now, the league is so deep. You look across the board. I love Milwaukee at those odds. I love Boston at those odds. These teams have a lot to prove next year after having kind of a subpar, mediocre, disappointing year. There's no, there's never really, there's no pressure to go back to back, right? Like it's awesome. Teams no. have done it. Denver has a chance to do that, but there's no pressure for them to go back to back. There's there's pressure now on Boston. There's pressure on that duo and Joe Missoula. Uh, Giannis is arguably the greatest player in the world. He has pressure next year uh, with a new coach and and with Chris Middleton a, a year healthy now. I think there's a lot of deep, really good teams. So it's it's not just going to be easy for them to repeat, but. I definitely think if they stay healthy, they re-sign guys like Bruce Brown and they just and they add a couple other pieces, they're gonna be right there. But I don't I don't feel like they have pressure to do it again. They, they there's a lot of teams that are gonna be hunting them down next year though. I, I think Chandler makes a great point. Health is gonna be a big thing and, and just how do the how do they make their team better? I, I think hmm. Bruce Brown, the most they're gonna be able to pay him. I think around $7 million, like he's going to be up for teams full mid-level exception, which starts at over $12 million. So it's, oh, dang. I, I saw what Bruce Brown said after uh, after they won the, the, the finals and, and how much he wants to be in Denver, but it's going to be a tough hill to climb Oof. to go and, and retain him. And beyond that, health for sure. But you look across the Western Conference, you expect Phoenix to be better. Uh, Memphis will see second half of the season if and when Jaws back in the fold. Sacramento, you would expect them to take a jump as well. Lakers, Lakers will always be there. Clippers, if they keep this duo and they stay healthy. And Oklahoma City, that's a team that I'm really looking at to take a jump as well. Uh, Ch Chet Holmgren coming back healthy. Another year with Josh Giddy, Shea Gilson Alexander. So the Western Conference, always going to be deep, always going. One interesting thing I've heard in the last few weeks is that Denver's trying to get in the first round and, and, and going and drafting a guy. So it'll be curious to see. They have a bunch of future picks. Who, who they can trade to go get in the first round in next Thursday's NBA draft. But listen, I, I, I spent time talking to Nuggets officials during the finals, spoke to them once Tim Connolly took the Minnesota job. Even if everyone on the outside thinks they won't make it back to the finals or won't win it all, you know Calvin Booth, Michael Malone, they expect this team next year to win a championship. So, so that was a good listing of the Western Conference teams, Eddie, and I'm wondering if any of those stood out to you as far as the most uh, dangerous or the most threatening to this Nuggets team moving forward. I mean, I, I think you have the same teams you're worried about. The, the issue that those teams have going forward, the Warriors, the, the Lakers, the Suns, uh, the, the Pelicans who are seeming to hmm. be willing to do some shuffling, is the cap is going to be an issue for them. The, the, it's not as easy. It's not going to be as easy to collect max contract players and, and gobble them together and, and create a super team now as it once was 
And you're going to need, there's going to be a lot more stress in draft capital. And I'm not surprised that the Nuggets are trying to get back into the first round because they've drafted so well. One thing I will say about Bruce Brown, if they have to lose him for money reasons, uh, they obviously love Christian Brown and he can step into that role. And then Peyton Watson, who, who uh, Chandler mentioned yesterday, it was a rookie for them this year. They have really high hopes for him going forward, 6'8". He can score a little bit. And if they can groom him to being another Christian Brown, it won't hurt as much to lose Bruce Brown. I think they're in a great situation. They have their guys locked up for the future going forward. They have a team that they love, obviously. They have a team that makes sense, and they have a team that they can afford as they go hmm. into deeper into the contracts of these guys. Um, it's going to be tough to catch up with them. Teams are going to have to get real creative this summer. Yeah, I want to ask I, you – oh, sorry. Go ahead, Chandler. No, I agree with that. But I got to say, $7 million a year – Bruce Brown's not going back for $7 million a year. He, he deserves a lot more than that. He has outplayed that, and I think a team's going to go – another contender that has more space is going to go and offer him more than that. But I do like the point that Christian Braun has showed flashes in this postseason that he can kind of handle more of a load. Same thing Peyton Watson. I love him. Chomps just said they're trying to get up in a draft, so it's almost like they're preparing to lose Bruce Brown. And – There'll be a guy that they can go and get in free agency that can give similar production to Bruce Brown at seven million a year versus you know going up to that twelve to fifteen million dollar range. So it, it, that's tough, and that's going to be a hard loss. But there, there'll be guys to kind of replace him. Oh, it's, the, it's always heartful when you hear that you're replaceable. I don't like that. Uh, look, I want to preface my next question by just saying I don't think this because I saw a lot of talking heads yesterday beating this narrative into the ground. And I don't know about it, but Chandler, there are people saying that the path the Nuggets had to take to get to the finals eh, wasn't that impressive. A reminder, they beat an eight seed, a four seed, a seven seed, and then an eight seed again. Do you think that that diminishes what they were able to accomplish at all? No, maybe they got the benefit of the doubt on, on an easier path with some upsets and, and the heroics that the Miami Heat pulled off. And sure, would it have been different if maybe that Celtics team or a Milwaukee team, but that's out of their control, right? It's like when a team wins a national championship to us uh, and, and they got to go through it. One of these Cinderella teams in March Madness, that doesn't diminish what they did. They can, they got to control what they can control. And the Nuggets all season long were, were the best team in the Western conference, arguably in the NBA. So whatever, whatever team, whatever that they were, that they drew, uh, that's out of their, that's out of their <laughs> jurisdiction and, and they have nothing to do with that, but they handled, I mean, they, how much better do you want them to play? They, they lost one time in the finals. They sweep the Lakers. It, I don't. I don't think that diminishes it at all. I just think it shows you that they're actually more mature and they never had any letdowns. You know, assuming that they were heavy favorites in all these series, they just handled it. Whatever the job was, the, whatever the task was at hand, they handled it professionally and they they approached it like we're going to win this no matter what, and that's what they did. So you can't knock or take them away just because there were some upsets. Yeah, look, like surprise, guys. The regular season, it actually matters. Like, getting <laughs> seeding actually matters. Home court matters. And pl playing with continuity throughout the regular season, all that stuff matters. So, to the victor, go the spoils with this. I can't believe people are saying this because going into the playoffs, a lot of people said the Lakers could beat them. The Suns could beat them. People were saying the Timberwolves were a live dog if healthy. If I was to give them one critique, that would be that. Timberwolves were down a couple of their core guys. Suns lost two starters in their series. But they, that's not their fault. They, it's not like they can help that. And plus, the, the Nuggets have no injury sympathy for anybody. They were, they were dealing with, they lost Jamal Murray for two straight playoff series. It's like, yo, those are the breaks. Uh, uh, I picked the Suns to beat them. I picked the Lakers to beat them. If they missed out on anybody, it was the Warriors. And that's the Warriors' fault for losing to the Lakers, all the stuff that happened in the East. The East is funny because we, we say the same thing about the Heat, but they beat the two best teams in the East on the way to the, to the finals. So clearly they were better. They, they had the chance, they had the opportunity to lose those series, and they did not lose them. So, yo, it, they beat who was there. They, they, they don't make yeah. the schedule. It's up to the other teams to keep up with them. And that Lakers team, I, I don't want to diminish that Lakers team because that was a really good team. And the Nuggets just ran through them. So it's not like they beat a bunch of chumps. They they beat everybody who was in front of them, and they beat them decisively. Looking back at this at this season, we know I think we know now, none of those other teams were better than the Nuggets anyway. Who did, Maybe they missed out on the Clippers, but we know the story with the Clippers. So everybody else, they beat them fair and square. It is what it is.
I feel like we're giving so many benefits of the doubt to the teams that didn't accomplish what they were supposed to accomplish. And then the Nuggets are getting crushed because they beat the teams that beat the teams that people are claiming should have been there in the first place. It makes absolutely no sense. And it's why we have playoffs. And there have been people that I, I respect in this business saying this yesterday that I was just sort of open mouth listening to like, this doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but here we are Nuggets. Enjoy everything. You've earned it. Now they got to learn some stuff. Shams. What do you think they'll learn from this title run? I mean, there's a lot that Jamal Murray, I'm focused on him. We saw Nikola Jokic. He's got like no care of the world. He's thinking about the parade ending, going back to his horses, uh, spending family time. He's got another family event uh, around August uh, time. And so we'll see if he's going to play for the Serbian national team in the FIBA World Cup as those teams start to get set as well uh, for, for the Olympic qualifiers. But um, to me, Jamal Murray, the way he was able to come back and be himself, I keep, I keep bringing bringing this up but I, I saw this team in the bubble I saw how good they were going to be I saw how good they were the upset they had against the Clippers I really thought that this team if, if Jamal Murray doesn't tear his ACL missed the last two postseasons they could have had a championship earlier they could have been in the finals earlier so if anything they got exactly I think what was meant for this team now Jamal Murray he got healthy I think as the year went on in the playoffs I think he was, he was at his best I, I can't wait to see Jamal Murray next season healthy uh, this is this is a guy that has a real shot to be an all-star uh, and really be a guy that could be in contention for all NBA, given what he's proven in the playoffs. Hmm. Yeah, you, you know what it showed? It showed that when he is healthy, he's a top three point guard and that he can be a number one option on any given night and definitely a number two option on a championship level team. And everything he's went through, someone like this, it, it, this, is a, this is even sweeter for him because guys counting him out, you know the story about – Malone or when he went to Malone's office and asked him if, he's, if they're going to keep him he went through hell and to go through that surgery and now to kind of be back at the top again it feels sweeter than just kind of taking the normal path so I'm super hyped for Jamal Murray uh, and also I think this championship run it showed you that there used to be like the big threes back in the day now it's like there's teams all across the league whether you look at Boston with Brown and Tatum or Embiid with Harden or Philly with Embiid and Harden or, you know, Giannis and Middleton, all of these teams with duos, this now is the recipe. As long as you fill out that roster with the other guys, with the Aaron Gordons, with the Bruce Browns, with the tough defensive minded shooting guys like Brown and KCP and Christian Brown, that, that's the that's the recipe. You have your horses, you're going to ride them during the during the, you know, clutch, most crucial part of the games. But this just shows you that when you have a duo like Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, you can contend for a championship if those role guys continue to, to play their role and do it well. Miami Heat role guys didn't do it as good as the Nuggets did. They end up winning the finals. But I think it showed a lot of things. It showed a lot of teams that they're going to need six extra fouls with bigger guys on the bench to handle Jokic. It's funny that this guy's so good. Other teams are now going to plan next season for him in the playoffs. Um, but it was a special. It was a special run. And the way they orchestrated and put this team together is perfect. And you can tell these guys like each other. There's no real distractions on the team. These guys are good guys. Jokic is, we've never seen anybody like him. I bet he cares more about the Serbian national team making it to the Olympics <laughs> and, the NBA, and the Nuggets winning an NBA championship. Uh, these guys are unselfish. Uh, they, their coach is unbelievable. So they have such an unbelievable thing going on over there. <laughs> the horse racing. It's got, it just must be fun. I, I don't understand what I'm missing. Uh, five different champions in the last five years. I know we're high off the rush of a new champion right now. We're talking dynasty and it's fun to think about Eddie, but do you think the parody will continue and, and we'll just keep having new parties every year? I do think the league is a little top heavy and the five different champions is a little misleading. I mean, we were just talking a few weeks back, the same four teams in the conference finals in the bubble are the same four teams now. So we do have a lot of the same faces. Uh, we do have a lot of the same duos, as Chandler mentioned, that are up there. Uh, but yeah, talk of a dynasty is a little premature because there's so much variance now with the with the three point shooting, with the pace of the with the pace of play and the injuries that result are a result of that, that. It's tough to say that. Like, there, anything could happen. It, there's, there's constant roadblocks. But they will be contenders and very, very serious contenders, if not the very best team for a time going forward, for sure. It just takes so much to get to the championship. And, and nobody knows better than the Nuggets. I mean, like Shams mentioned, those guys felt like they could have won titles. They could have competed for titles the last three years since the bubble. 
and and just a million different things happen for them. So I think, again, the variance of the league, it's going to make it hard for teams to repeat, three-peat. We haven't had a three-peat since Kobe and Shaq. Uh, you know, we're talking, we're on to 20 years now of no three-peats. So it's going to be really hard to complete that mission, but they are set up in a great place. Like we've been saying it this whole week, they're in a great place to be the first team in, in, in some time to repeat. And uh, they got a good shot. They just have to stay healthy. And it's really on them. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie makes a good point. Obviously, the NBA, is it's it's really top-heavy right now. Like, next year, we know exactly who are going to be the top 10 teams, barring a huge turnover in free agency or via trade. We know the good teams next year, and we know the bad teams. But when you look at the Nuggets, they are a team that's going to be back. They are, like we talked about yesterday, they have their four main guys under contract. They're going to be there. But also, those other teams at the top, they're now hungry. The, the Milwaukee Bucks are thirsty for, a, you know, a, con, a contending team. The Boston Celtics have a lot of pressure to win a championship next year. I look at a team like the Phoenix Suns. This was arguably the most talented team after the KD trade. And you got a guy like Devin Booker, who I firmly believe will be in the MVP talks next year. All these guys have things to prove. And a lot of all these guys are just missing a championship. So... It's not going to be easy for Denver at all. I think it's great for the league. The, the league is so talented where you look at all these teams across the board that anything can happen on any given night. And then there's players that can literally carry a team and win, go and win a playoff game. So it it, it oh, won't well. be easy for them. Yeah, that's that's, that's uh, interesting. What about all those mouth breathers who told us the ratings were going to be low? What happened? Did they get that wrong? <laughs> right. Yeah, listen, it's not going to be easy, but the, the Nuggets are going to be there right there in the conversation for years to come. It makes me happy that we know that there'll be a lot of good teams and we don't know that they'll just be two good teams. Like, I loved the Warriors run, but it was also kind of boring after a while that we knew it would be them. The Heat, on the other hand, I mean, there's no reason to doubt them. Jimmy Butler certainly doesn't. Having said, I still believe with everything in me that we will win a championship here in Miami, but it has been two bitter, very bitter finals losses. Um, and we know they're going to have to do some changing, Chandler, but how does Jimmy keep the positivity going? How do they regroup and, and try this again? Well, just as they did this year, right? They kind of flew under the radar. They, I still, I, I can't believe he said the regular, the regular season comment, how he doesn't decide to play off. I'm going to believe him, though, next year. I, I'm going to give him one more chance to kind of have a mediocre regular season and then turn it up in the playoffs. But this is a team with arguably the best coach. They don't really have a superstar player. I think Jimmy Butler is very, very good. I, 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 I can't put him in the same category as Kevin Durant. I can't put him in the same category as, as Steph, Cur uh, Steph Curry or Jokic or guys like that. But he's very good. But they're one piece away. They need something else. They need. They have a lot of decisions to make this summer on Max Struess, on Gabe Vincent. But this is a tough-minded team. This is a team that is used to being slept on. This is a team that has that culture that's going to grind. They're going to get better. They're going to continue to develop all these players. Um, but there's no doubt in my mind they're going to be right there in the thick of things. And you look at their team; they're not as they're not as good as Boston Celtics. They're not as talented as guys like Giannis and and you know Embiid and Harden and Tyrese Maxey. But they know how to win and they know how to compete, and that's more important than just talent alone. So, no doubt in my mind they'll be here in the same situation next year, contending for a championship, pending what they do in free agency, who they add, who they lose. There's a there's a real chance that the teams they beat in the Eastern Conference this year are going to go through a, a, a ton of transition this year. I mean, a lot of people think James Harden's on his way out of Philly. Uh, everybody's wondering about Jalen Brown all summer. Uh, Milwaukee, Chris Middleton, Brooke Lopez. If those teams get a little bit worse and the Heat manage to improve a little bit, yeah, they're right in the thick of things again. The problem is, who can they beat out West? I mean, we're, we're, I would never pick them against the Nuggets, ever, after what we just seen over last week. So then we're looking at, what, the Warriors, the Suns, the Clippers, if the Clippers get there. Like, I feel like those teams and their talent, it, it, it's just a better collection of talent. So it, it is tough for them, but they will be contenders in the East going forward, and they've always been aggressive. I mean, we were talking about this yesterday. Their history is to be aggressive and to figure out ways to improve that roster and to find these diamonds in the rough. So if they lose Gabe Vincent, it would not shock me if they find the next Gabe Vincent. And, and if they lose Kyle Lowry, it would not shock me if they go find another veteran point guard to fill that role for them. And whether it's this summer or whether it's next February, they just seem to always do that. And it's a, it's a great organization over there and they know what they like in their players and they know what they want going forward. So. I mean, since the bubble, they've been around. Conference finals, conference finals, finals. 
they're not going anywhere. Are they going to win a title while he's there? I, I don't know. That's tough sledding because, yes, these other teams will have some transition this year, but they're going to continue to get better going forward, and they have stars that are much better players than Jimmy, unfortunately for him. So many changes that could happen. Shams mentioned uh, about the Kyrie Irving at the deadline, the inquiries that were made in Miami. Should they try to sign Kyrie Irving Chandler? I mean, is that is that a fit that would actually work in Miami's favor? I mean, I'm a big talent guy, right? If I can get Kyrie Irving somehow and, and he's on his last limb, his last chance, yeah, I'll, I, I'd throw the kitchen sink still at Kyrie Irving. I think it's a, I think it's a mood point. I think he's going back to Dallas. I think they're going to give him a three or four year max deal. And and I think he'll be there for a while. But yeah, listen, in that culture with, with you know, that with Pat Riley there, with Eric Spolstra, if there's ever a place where you know Kyrie shenanigans can't be uh, can't be done, it's it's Miami. And again, he knows he's on his last chance here. He wants to get paid. He wants to succeed. Um, but yeah, I, I think if you can do that and you can and you can add a talent like Kyrie Irving and you're already in the situation you are, sure, swing for the fence. But he's going back to Dallas. You guys don't think Kyrie <laughs> could disrupt even the Miami Heat culture? That could be a good challenge for him. See if he could. <laughs> I feel like it'd be kind of fun to watch personally, but okay. So let's say it's not Kyrie Shams. Who, who are some of the other big names that this team could be targeting? Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's clear as you go into this off season, this is a team that probably wants to go get another high end, uh, you know, star type of guy, at least someone that can take the load off of Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo in the regular season, the guy that you can depend on, when Jimmy Butler, like he said during the regular season, like, I don't really care for the regular season. I'm ready for the playoffs. And we saw he can flip the switch come playoff time. He said it before. He doesn't care about all-star games. doesn't care about, about, um, about the regular season. He even told Jared Greenberg of NBA TV he doesn't care about the Hall of Fame. So this is a guy who clearly, uh, I mean, he's saying it, cares about winning a championship. And I think what this Heat team needs is a guy that can uh, help with that burden, in the, at least in the regular season, come playoff time. And so we'll see who that guy is. I mean, Kyrie Irving, they made an offer for him at the deadline. It was a little too late. It was right before the trade happened to the Mavericks. Um, mm -hmm. But that's the type of, of guy, right? So when you think about Dame Lillard, he's been uh, highly uh, reported on. He came out and said he'd love to be in Miami if, if he were to be traded. Um, so I, I think that's the type of guy that you want to go get. You know, does Brad Beal get available? So those are the types of players that you have to look at. If you're Miami, and what do you have to give? That's the biggest question, I think. Any package, Tyler Hero, you have, and they can trade up to three first round picks on draft night. So that's kind of the basis of a package you're looking at for a superstar player. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, can, I don't know. Eddie, have you done the whole what if Kyrie had been traded to Miami before all this? Like, have you thought about it and played with that idea? I mean, it depends on what they had to give up, right? I mean, you're probably looking at you know, Max Struess and Duncan Robinson and, and mm. whatever. But, I mean, he, he's a talent. He's an absolute talent, and he's a playoff performer. He's proven that before. I, I don't know how well he matches with their system, but, I mean, we look at the things that Tyler Hero has done. Kyrie can do <laughs> that and more if he's over there with those guys. So, yeah, if they were able to maintain Jimmy, Bam, and some of their other guys, it changes things for sure. But, I mean, how much better are they going to do it? I don't think they would beat the Nuggets if they have if they have. Kyrie instead of you know four other guys and the depth they needed to get there <laughs> all those guys contributed like wh whomever it was they would have had to yeah. trade it all those guys contributed so you know it's it is addition but it, it, you are have some subtraction as well I'm very curious about what they do this offseason like if they're going to really spring big if, if they're going to put Bam out of bio on the table which I don't think they should do unless it's for a, a, a Jalen Brown type, a Joel Embiid who probably should not be available unless he asks out um, one of those superstar types. Anything is possible for them. And and I'm very curious to see what they go. And, and you know, they get to start doing this next week. As Sean's mentioned, the night of the draft and they had those picks eligible to trade. Uh, Dame is the loudest of the names for sure. But I wonder if they kick the tires on Trey Young, you know, oh. they, they're going to have to add something and they have to know that going forward. So I'm very curious to see what they do. Well, Trey Young already said the Hawks were next. So he's got work to do in Atlanta, according to his uh, social media. But Chandler, <laughs> Tyler Hero, I mean, we, we did. It's been a minute since we've seen him play. Should he be on the table? 
I mean, I think, yeah, he is on the table, but also it's, it's what have you done for me lately? And he wasn't there in the most critical part. And obviously it's not his fault. He suffered a freak injury here. And Tyler Hero is a hooper and he's exactly what they need. Sure, if they can go and get a, a Jordan Clarkson or someone like that this summer to kind of replace him and go get you 15 to 22 points a game, and you can put Tyler Hero and some picks in a package to go and get a, a Kyrie or a Dame or a Trey Young. I love Trey Young there. I do think Trey Young as a second, third option on that team and that culture. I think that's exactly what he needs. But you know, that's that's a long shot too. But yeah, Tyler Hero, he can play and he's young and he could technically be their future scoring starting two guards for years to come. He's that good. He's that much of a talent. But it's all about i think again what the guys touched on what they're willing to give up and 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 they have a lot of assets so they're in they're in the driver's seat with what they can do and it'll be interesting because they're already a great product now without making it a uh, one move so it's it's they can only get better in my eyes i'm just pleading with twitter to get a, a championship ring emoji I, I just that's all i want i want that before i die because that wedding ring thing is so bizarre in context shams i mean what is that like that's that's something else. That's a different message. That's, uh, that's great confidence. We all need Trey Young confidence. I love it. It's very I'm confident. here for it. Some might say delusional, but those are just some. Uh, I don't know who they are. Shams, it's scoop time. We mentioned the Milwaukee Bucks at the top of the show, co-favorites, moving into next year with the Nuggets to win it all. The latest on Chris Middleton. What is it? Yeah, so Chris Middleton actually underwent surgery right after the season. He had to get his knee cleaned up. He dealt with... A, a, a really an ailing knee throughout the second half of this NBA season. He just was not right throughout the year. And so um, from what I'm told, this is this was a cleanup procedure, arthroscopic surgery that, that he had, and, and he's expected to resume basketball activities later this summer. But this is a guy that, that has a $40 million player option. We'll see. He has a deadline next week before the draft to pick it up or not. We'll see what happens there. Um, but I, I think when you look at his future in Milwaukee, I think there's a lot of signs that would point to him going back. He was very involved in the Bucks coaching search. Um, he spent time meeting with ownership, meeting with, league of, with team officials as far as where that would go, where that hiring process would go. So the fact that he was involved leads me to believe that he feels good about it. But Chandler, arthroscopic surgery for a guy like this and Chris Milton who dealt with it, what goes into that? What's the re recovery from that? And is that something to, to monitor and be aware of? No, and this is the perfect time to do it. He's got the whole offseason ahead of him to do it. This is super simple procedure. 30 minutes, you clean it up. It's just a scope. Um, he can walk out of that hospital after he has a surgery. Uh, quick rehab, month tops, I would say. And then he's right back on the court, you know, doing full activity. So people forget when, when, the, when the Bucks made that run, Chris Middleton was their guy. He was their closer. The ball was in his hands when they needed a bucket as great as Giannis is. So he's huge to their, to their team, to their success. I, I don't see him. If he opts out, I think it's just to get a longer deal in Milwaukee. I can't see him going anywhere else. Uh, I think they know he's a perfect fit the way he can create shots, the way he can knock down shots. He's a perfect, uh, you know, Robin to, to Giannis's Batman. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, let him go anywhere if anything i'd let him opt out kind of longer yeah chris smoked the pistons in those highlights by the way it was, he was giving them buckets but yeah they need him they, this they've proven that this is a championship core this they've proven they can win they're in the thick of it every year they won the east in the regular season this year um, what they need to do is they need to uh, improve on the fringes they need to figure out brooke lopez and they need to figure out the rest of their wings and, and some depth because they know what they're looking at in the East going forward, and it's going to be the Celtics and the Heat and the Sixers. Um, but, yeah, they need to keep him there. I, I don't think there's a better situation for him out there at this very moment either. You know, I, if, if you look around the landscape, you can always use a wing who can make threes and who can create his own baskets. But he, the way he plays off of Giannis and the way they complement each other, it's the best situation for both of them right now. We are, uh, we're going to say goodbye to Shams right here. Shams, enjoy your weekend. Our last show on Monday, wear something pretty. Uh, we will see you then. And when we come back, Jimmy Butler says, he ain't worried about the Hall of Fame. Are we buying that? We'll talk about it next. Run it up, run it back, 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 run it Your good friend, Dwayne Wade's going into the Hall of Fame in a couple months. Have you allowed yourself to think what it would ever mean to you to be elected into the Basketball Hall of Fame? Yes, I have. And what do you think? Don't care. 
You don't care whether you're a Hall of Famer? No, I don't. Do you think your resume? Still don't care. Honestly speaking, could care less. If we're being brutally honest, uh, if I was selected to the Hall of Fame, I'm not going. You're not going to accept it? No, 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 I'm not going. Like It's like the festivities and all of that. I just want to like, I just want to like go put my feet in the sand somewhere. It's Jimmy Buffett over here. Okay, so he does not, not just that he doesn't care about being in the Hall of Fame, he doesn't even want to go and make the speech if it does happen. Eddie, are you buying that? <laughs> I, maybe he, maybe he, made, Michael Jordan went and he cried. Like this is, a Shannon Sharp, and I'm no big fan of Shannon Sharp, but he nailed it yesterday. It's disrespectful to the Hall of Fame to say, I'm too cool to go. <laughs> I'd rather be in Belize or whatever. Michael Jordan went and he cried in front of all of us. Like it, it was, it, I rolled my eyes so much when I seen this. I don't believe him. I think this is ludicrous. I don't know why he's doing this stuff that he's doing, but like, uh -oh. I guess bro, like whatever, if he makes it, like he's friends anyway. I think he, maybe he punched his ticket this year on, because I feel like the standards have been lowered a little bit, but yeah, if you make it go, like, what, what are you, what are you talking about right now? This, this is crazy to me. Yeah, I mean, I, I, <laughs> it's it's a weird thing to say. Obviously, throughout the history of the NBA, it, it's a huge, huge honor to to be even considered. And we're talking like he's a lock. And listen, he's a six time All Star. We all know he's been to two finals, one conference finals. I think he is a championship away from being a lock. Um, he's a hell of a player, he's a hell of a talent. There's a lot of guys similar in his situation that, that aren't in the Hall of Fame. Um, but to say that if he gets elected to not go is a little weird, it's a little disrespectful, but I get what he's doing. He, he <clears throat> We're the prisoner of the moment right now. Jimmy Butler is as hot as they come right now. He's a superstar. 15 years from now, are we going to talk about how he led an eight seed to the finals? That's why he's in the Hall of Fame. I don't know, but he, he, he has a hell of a resume. He's, you know, five time all NBA. He's he's you know, he, he, he's got the, the accolades. I think the cherry on top would be the championship. But again, I just think it's like a weird flex to say I'm not going if I get stuck. <laughs> that's, that's a little rude. It just seemed. Yeah, it Jimmy's seemed a not little forced. Me. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember he put he went to an all star game. He knew he couldn't play in injured and kept his spot. Like, he's not fooling me. I remember what he's done. He could have gave that spot away to a guy. He did the same thing Giannis did this year, by the way, which I hated this year as well. Yeah, he but he did. knew he couldn't play all weekend. He kept his jersey. He, he, there was deserving guys that could have taken that spot. And it, <laughs> like, it, he's not fooling me. He's going If he makes it to the Hall of Fame and he's fourth on the, on the ballot on the docket that night, he's going. And he's going to watch the whole ceremony. I don't believe him. Maybe he doesn't like to give speeches publicly. Like, he has a phobia of public speak. I could see that. And then he's just adding his All he's done completely. is talk for the last three months. I don't believe that part either. <laughs> like, remember, the, remember the years of like Damian Lillard saying, I've disrespected not making an all-star team, not making a team yes. USA. But, like he's just saying this. So we want to, we want to find out. All right. So, all right, Jimmy, you're in. Like, is he going to come? Is, is he not going to come? Maybe Go it's ahead. a brilliant strategy that he's doing here, but, and it's, it, it's, but I still think it's ridiculous. I think, He's hype. I think he cries when he gets the call. I think his family, his friends are ecstatic if he ever gets that up. <laughs> what, a, what a weird thing to be talking about in June, uh, way ahead of time. Um, Bill Simmons thinks that the Sixers are going to land Bradley Beal in a trade, Chandler. Is that a significant upgrade over James Harden? Honestly, I hope he does. I think Brad Beal is one of those players that he's so talented and he's just been in a shitty situation for his entire career to be boldly honest with you i think he is a perfect fit for joel and i think he's a great guy he's a florida gator for god's sake so you know he's just well coached. He's, oh brother he's a true gentleman but no i mean i think true gentleman i think harden we can just see he's on a different wave right now he's on a different path he's on a different vibe he, he had the the issues with doc uh, he's got all these reports about going back to Houston or maybe Phoenix. It's not, why can't they just be, I'm hyped to go back to Philly and play with the MVP and play with this, you know, contending team. Uh, and it's not, and I know Joel Embiid and, and Brad Beal are friends and they both trained with Drew Hanklin in the summer. Um, and so maybe there is something there and he can create and he can shoot the ball and he's slightly younger than James Harden. So I definitely think there is something here. I know they have a personal relationship. I know Brad Beal, 
you know, he got the long-term deal in Washington, but he doesn't want to go back there. He doesn't want to just sit there and rot and on that team like he has been. Um, so maybe, and I can see it. I do think they actually get better than that, depending on, it's, it's going to be a collective effort to replace James Harden. But yeah, I think Brad Beal would be a perfect fit. Uh, Eddie, NBA executives believe that Carl Anthony Towns will be traded in the next few weeks. Are you buying that? And how many fan bases are secretly going, not here, not here? Go. <laughs> <laughs> Next few weeks is very interesting. And I mean, I think this is a smoke and fire situation. It's long been noise mm. about maybe he could be on his way out. Uh, I'm curious what that trade package looks like because of his teammate, Rudy Gobert, and the amount of things you would have to give up. I I, I would be very interested to see him on the Knicks. There, there's a bunch of teams. I think Miami would be a real interesting team with him. It's as goofy as he can be. And I'm no big fan of Carl Anthony Towns. And I know a lot of NBA fans aren't. He is a talent. He is an absolute sniper at that size. He could be, he can be disruptive defensively. Uh, he he is a talent worth giving up a lot of draft draft stock for. I'd be lining up to get him if I could, if he fits. Um, do I believe it? What? Yeah, I think I, I think they're no, ushering in a new era out there Patrick in Minnesota. Patrick Beverly. Patrick Beverly says he's the best big man. And what am I drunk? What is happening right now? But, it is Pat funny. Bev is trying to go viral and get some podcast <laughs> views. Come on, Doug. <laughs> For whatever reason, and I don't know Cat personally, but Eddie, he said he's 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 goofy, right? He's a little bit corny. For whatever reason, he's not the most likable guy, which is crazy because he has game and he is a absolutely dominating force, especially on the offense offensive end. He can shoot. Eddie just said something really interesting. The Miami Heat, he would be perfect. I had this in my notes earlier. The Heat, I'd love to see them get like a Lopez or a Vucevic this summer with a mm. stretch big center. Towns is, Towns would, I mean, they'd have to give up a lot, I think. Imagine what they'd have to give up since they just gave up that much for Rudy Gobert. And Towns is, you know, I think way more talented. Uh, so it's interesting. And I don't think he's going to be a T Wolf next year. I think that course is, is kind of ran itself dry and and I think he's going to find a new home but yeah you you look across the board any team can use this guy he's big he can post up he can bring the ball up he's he's a similar version of Jokic where he can do everything on the offensive end so he definitely has a lot of value and I can and I would love to see him somewhere else wait was Jimmy Butler and Carl Anthony Towns was that that Minnesota team where Jimmy Butler's like, y'all are all soft. Yeah, yeah that ain't happening. It was. That ain't happening. It there was. is no chance. That's the problem. And Carl Anthony Towns, unless he grew a heart, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Like he got real tough or something. I just don't see that happening. Uh, but anyways, Fred Van Vliet, about to maybe get a bunch of money. He opted out. He is a free agent. Uh, the Lakers, do we think that's the best fit for him, Eddie? Um, it's one of them. It's one of them. And they need a point guard. <laughs> they, they need somebody who can help shooting and then you saw what they had with D'Lo and the way he flamed out uh, I don't think they can go into next year with Austin Reeves as their primary point guard so Fred Van Vliet yeah he, he's one of the one of the good fits he's battle tested he, he's he's been a great playoff performer there's gonna be a long line of teams looking for him I think the interesting thing for him is gonna be price tag he just turned down 22 million dollars next year and you can say hey $22 million for one year or, you know, 60 for three years or whatever he has in mind. But $22 million is a lot of money. And I, there's not a ton of cap space going around this summer. Yeah, we keep, he's a plug and play guy too, right? His, his style, the way he can shoot, the way he can run offense, he can play in any system. I, we keep bringing up the heat. I would, I would love him on the Miami heat. I think if they don't resign, Vincent, I think that's a huge upgrade. I think he's a better version of Gabe Vincent. He's a great dude. He fits that culture. He fits that locker room. Um, I'd love to see him there. I'd love to see him on the Lakers. I'd love to see him, you know, if Kyrie Irving moves from Dallas, but I don't think it's going to happen. I'd love to see him in Dallas alongside Luca to give him another playmaker. Um, hmm. Any team could use Fred Van Vliet and any contending team, he's going to make even better. So, I think he's in a good spot. I think he's going to get a huge payday. Listen, if you just opt out of a $22 million option, you know you're getting that for a longer deal, right? Your agent told you there's no way that you're going for 22 year, a $22 million for one year. He's going to get that for a longer three-, four-year deal. So he's in a good spot. He's going to get a good payday, and, and hopefully he goes to a good team so we can actually see him you know, play again at the highest level in the playoffs in the finals. Yeah, it's more fun for everybody if, if it's relevant. Uh, coming up next, we hop on the coaching carousel. Talk about which coach in year one 
has the best chance to make it, I don't know, to the finals or far. <laughs> oh, and run it back returns. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, 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 run it up, and run it back. The coaching carousel, I, you know, having looked at it on a page, I don't think I realized how many moves have just been made uh, and put in, as the off season hasn't even really started. But we want to go ahead and do superlatives. Who's doing that? Here you go. There's, there's what has happened already. A lot of outs, a lot of ins. I won't read it to you. I know you guys can all read. I want to start with the new coach that's most likely to succeed long term. Chandler on the right. Who do you got? Um, hmm. I believe I have Nick Nurse. I think he, <laughs> I think he had a, I think he got a little bit of a raw deal in Toronto. I think this is a fresh start for him where he's inheriting the best team available. He just went and got outside Griffin in Milwaukee. I mean, the uh, the Philadelphia 76ers are right there. I think a lot has to do with the Harden situation, but when you have the MVP and you have guys like Tyrese Maxey and you have the depth under contract that this team has, I think he's going to a very good situation with a very strong fan base uh, that's primed and ready to make a big run next year. So I, I think this is going to be a huge step forward for him and his career. And he's going to, again, he's inheriting the MVP of the entire league. What more can he ask for? That's not bad. I, I like I like Chandler's choice. I went with Monty Williams. And my hmm. thinking is that the the markers for success will be different for him. This is a team who was in the lottery, almost had the worst record in the league. It's a team with a lot of young talent, and it's going to be a slow build for him. And that's what he does. He, he develops young talents. He helps build them into a better team, and they have a ton of talent there. So in that sense, it will be a success. I think he has a ton of job security over there as well, so he's going to get the time to make that happen. I love Caden Cunningham. I love Jaden Ivey. I love Jonathan Weissman. I, I think they got a great thing going over there, and I'm very interested to see it play out. And so in that sense, I think, yo, if mm. they're if they're close to 500 this year, that's a success. If they're in the playoffs in three years, that's a success. So by by based on those markers, yes, I think he's going to have the most successful long term out there in Detroit. That was a very deep moment, Eddie, because we're all defining success differently. And I appreciate you for uh, for thinking <laughs> of it that way. Uh, most likely to reach the finals in year one. Eddie, what do you got? Well, they deleted my uh, answer here, but I'm pretty sure I chose Frank Vogel because they were in the conference finals just now, and they have a ton of opportunity to improve this offseason as well. And at the end of the day, they have LeBron, they have Anthony Davis. So I'm going to go with Frank Vogel. I, I think they will be aggressive this summer. I don't know if they'll get Kyrie, but I think they'll be aggressive in, in, in adding to the, to the wing depth. I think they'll find themselves another big. And they were right there. Like, they were a great team at the end of this playoffs. It's just the Nuggets were that much better, which is unfortunate for them. But if I'm saying most likely, I'm going to go with Frank Vogel. Yeah. Jim, I, I wait. Agree. What? Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. There you go. Just me being confused. I haven't slept. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm with Eddie. I think he also, I think that that's a great team. It's a great core. I think that Booker is absolutely primed. Uh, to have an MVP season, the Chris Paul thing's looming a bit, but mm. in the DeAndre Ayton situation, but this this team is talented. Uh, th this team has that duo that we talked about earlier that can lead you to a championship. And again, I'm I'm high on Devin Booker next year, really entering his prime, kind of you know under the radar in some capacity, slept on a little bit. I really expect mm. him and Katie to explode next year. And, wouldn't be surprised if they end up as the number one seed next year coming out of the West. So I, I think I think Vogel has got a got something got something special here. I also think he's got a little revenge, uh, hopefully in his mind for how he was treated uh, west of there. So we'll see, we'll see. That, you know, not to be negative, but most likely to be fired. Chandler, we'll start with you. <laughs> it's the worst one. Uh, I think it's got to be Missoula. I think Oof. again, the expectations that he had going back to this season how they came short, some of the situational, uh, you know, situations that he had that didn't really pan out with, with some decisions he made, with the substitution patterns, you know, play calls, uses of timeouts. I think he really didn't do the best of job in critical moments this year, but I do give him the benefit of the doubt. I know it's a new system. He kind of got thrown into the fire of a crazy situation, but just know they have the, they have what are the second highest odds to win a championship next year. I wouldn't be surprised mm -hmm. if they don't get off to a hot start. 
they make a move immediately. And definitely if they come up short again, it's hard to imagine him finishing out this contract. I think he's got a really short leash going forward. Okay, so Chandler cheated, but I think that's the right answer. I think it is Joe Missoula. I think it's the yeah, shortest leash in the league at the moment. Uh, I To choose one of the five new coaches, I picked Nick Nurse. And it's oh, mostly wow. because I think there's a lot of, I think there's a, they're really in flux out there in Philly. And I think there's a lot to be decided. There's a lot of pressure on them to win immediately. Uh, they've went out in the second round over and over and over. And if that happens again, I could see something. Ha I could see a huge overhaul out there, I including getting trading Joel Embiid, including uh, firing <laughs> the president of basketball operations and their general manager. And just, just a complete overhaul. But again, that's very unlikely. But if I had to choose one of the five and not cheat like Chandler did, did I, I'm going to choose uh, Nick Nurse. But I agree with Chandler. I think Joe Mazzulla is on borrowed time. I think Sam Cassell, he's looking at that big chair and he knows that's his come hell or high water. Do you want to respond to the allegations of cheating, Chandler? Well, he, <laughs> he's saying because the producer sent a list of new coaches. In my eyes, Mazzulla is a new coach. He hasn't even done a 46. <laughs> he's a rookie. He's a rookie. I mean, it's... So, okay, it's an asterisk. Good loophole, we'll give, you know, good loophole, you're gonna, right. Yeah, it's a good loophole and you're brilliant <laughs> for using it. I will give you uh, give you that. All right, we're going to uh, take a quickie. When we come back, we put a ribbon on this season with the, the last of Fitter Brick. Hmm, sad. Run it all, the running back, yeah, yeah. Run it all, run it back, run it all, run it back. It's our final Fitter Brick of the season. We have missed you so much. And yes, the clincher suit for young Jokic. <laughs> just Dress just for a funeral. business, business what? as usual. I love it. I, I, I love, love it. what he's doing here. Bring it's bring clean. the dress code back. Let's see who else can you do know, this. Bring, Please a, bring, bring, a, bring a briefcase next time, you classy man. <laughs> you, he's so classy. An attache, if you will. Yeah, he looks yeah. awesome. And that's a historic picture. So good for you. Oh, OK, well, there you go. <clears throat> we that's asked for a this is the difference in the generations. You see that? Nice tailored suit. What is uh, it, four years different? Five years different? Come on. What is kids. this? Kids. I love so a good khaki cargo. Shops? Oh, sweet. No, that's DeAndre Jordan, by the way. There's no generational excuse here. He's the oldest one. Overalls. <laughs> Overalls yeah. are for the summer. Right here, you guys. For this? He's getting ready for the summer here. I, I get it, but. Yeah. Whoa. I wear it. So if that means anything, oh, dude, yes, please. This is from game four. This was some Miami stuff right here. That's, I think yeah. the the wifey might have dressed him this day. She told him he likes, she likes that. Call me crazy. This was. This, this is horrible. Those colors should never be thrown together the same. This is ridiculous. You? Yeah, I'm it's not like with it. Bruins, UCLA Bruins. OT. I, I don't got mustard it. pants on. What are we doing? It's <laughs> uh, Aaron Gordon. <laughs> Simple Aaron Gordon. I mean, at least he has a shirt on here. That's that's fun. Like yeah, we should have used him in his game shorts outside still after the game. <laughs> still out there. I mean, he is the man of the people if there ever was one. By the way, the first, scary, thing I thought but... about, the first thing I thought about was the shooting that happened in Denver. Was it obviously I know. Right. Yeah. A little just, terrifying. Yeah, right? I, I just, he got his I just chains like on crowds. too? Yeah. Yeah, that's a, Oh, Neymar, a little cross, uh, cross sport love here. He was, that was a good ball man. He thought it was who? I thought that was Derek White. No, that would be weird. <laughs> it would be really weird if he was just walking around the court in Miami. I don't, you know, it's a giant jacket and some huge jeans. I don't know what to tell you. It was not, not that cold in Miami that day. Oh, no Chris Tucker with his all white ensemble. Chris Tucker can do no wrong in my eyes. I think he's the yeah, funny. He, he, Miami all white. I'm rolling. He can do a little wrong. He can wear whatever he wants. It's all good. I mean, he can, obviously. He picked up but, uh, Michael Jackson in a Lamborghini one time. He's <laughs> lived a life. Uh, D Wade with no. the uh, the high waist pants. Um, no, I no, just, just a simple maybe, no. Maybe, Strong no for me. Maybe we're so far gone and then just out, Eddie. Maybe we're maybe we're. D Wade does. Yeah, he's way cooler than me, but no way. Yeah, we might be wrong. We were, we're wrong. We are out of time. Uh, we're going to enjoy the rest of the week and the weekend and the parade tomorrow, and we will be back, back Monday morning. Back. See y'all then. Run it all, the running back, yeah, yeah. Run it all, run it back, run it all.